What's up, my peeps? How's it going? So over the course of the next few weeks here, I'm going to be doing some challenges inspired by Stranger Things. This is in celebration of the startup of Season 3. Also, a few of you guys asked for this on Twitter. So we're going to start this off the right way and recreate the Stranger Things intro. Let's get it going. If you're new to the channel, what's poppin'? My name is Burke Cullinan. I do these weekly filmmaking challenges to try and learn new things and grow as a filmmaker. Like I said, over the course of the next few weeks, I'm gonna be doing some things based around Stranger Things, so if there's anything you guys wanna see, leave a comment down below. The one thing I do ask is you don't leave any spoilers for my sake and anybody else who hasn't finished season three. Let's just address the elephant in the room here. I'm aware that I do look like Steve, so, uh you don't have to leave a comment in regards, or you can, if you want, go, go, you know what, you do you. All right, so we're gonna hop right into this here. Now, I already kind of started working on this in Photoshop. As you can see here, I already mapped out how I want everything to look. I just pulled the Stranger Things logo in and then kind of recreated it using the Monday challenge. Now, one thing that I haven't done yet is I need to separate every single one of these letters. And the reason is, is because it's just gonna be a lot easier to animate those motions that you see in the intro. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna duplicate this group and then I'm actually just gonna take everything out of this group. I don't want it inside there anymore. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna keep this bottom group still on and I'm gonna change the color of it so it's easy for me to line everything up. Now the T's already lined up, I don't need that. The Y's already lined up, don't need that. And these lines are already lined up as well. Now I've already scaled these how I want them to be. So I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna finish off the Monday first and then I'll go down to the challenge and all I'm gonna do is just duplicate this layer and create the individual letters from that. Before we bring it into After Effects, we have to change every single one of these layers to a smart object. And the reason is, is because of that stroke. Now, if I was to bring that into After Effects, if I was to mess around with the scale and the position of these layers, that would affect the stroke. So if we convert it to a smart object, it will stay the size that it's supposed to be. All you gotta do is just right click and then convert to smart object. And then just do that for every single one of these layers. In After Effects, we're gonna bring in that graphic we created. Now when we bring this in, we wanna make sure we bring it in as a composition and retain the layer sizes. Make sure layer options are editable layer styles, click OK. Now when we do this, it's gonna bring in the composition, which is the actual size that we want it. It's gonna be in UHD 4K. And you can see that when we open that composition, you have all of the layers that you created in Photoshop. I'm not going to create the entire title sequence, I'm just gonna create the end where they all start to come together. Now, now there's two ways that you could do this little zoom effect that you're seeing here as the Stranger Things comes together and it zooms back, it kind of pulls back. The most common way that you might see is by creating a camera and turning everything into 3D space. You would do that by going layer, new, camera. This will pop up. You don't really have to change any of these specifications. This should be good to go. Click OK. Then select all your layers and make sure that you put them in 3D space by clicking this little box right here. And now, when you change the position of your camera, that will change everything that's in 3D space. I don't think I'm gonna do it that way. I think I'm gonna do it a different way. I'm just gonna create a null object, parent everything to null object, and then create the animation that way. So I'll go to layer, new, null object, select all my layers, grab this pick whip, and parent them to the null object. Now if I change my scalar position, it changes everything that I parented it to. So from here, I'm gonna piece everything together and then we'll do the glow and all that stuff. All right, so I have all the motions animated, that's good to go. As I was working through this, I figured the best way to go about it would be to work backwards. So go to the part where everything has finally come together, and then from there, move backwards and start those animations. So I started with the top row first, the Monday, and I figured which letter came in last, I keyframed that, and then I moved backwards till it was out, and I just did that for every single one. So just to give an example of that, if that sounds confusing, if we go to the T, because that's the last letter that comes in, go to our position here, 
we see that this is the last spot where it lands, right here. So I set a keyframe because I already have that position set. Set that keyframe, and then I found out where does it leave the frame. So it went all the way back until I couldn't see it anymore, and then boom, right there. And then from there, I just dragged the T out of the frame, and then for every single one of these when I was done, I selected my keyframes, right clicked, and then went to keyframe assist and easy ease. That just smooths it out, because if you watch the Stranger Things animation, you do notice that it goes through this nice, smooth motion. Also, one thing I did have to actually fix was the D. So you can see here, if I slowly scrub through, that the A is going behind the D. Now I actually had to go back into Photoshop, and it's a good thing that I converted the text layers to smart objects rather than rasterize them. And you can see that the D is actually filled in, and I was able to do that because I double clicked on my smart object, and then I went back and filled it in. So what I had done originally was I killed the fill, so I came up here and I brought it down to 0%. All I did to bring that back was I just clicked on fill and brought it up to 100% saved it out in Photoshop, and then I actually had to place the A behind the D. It was on top of it, but I had to place it underneath. That way, you get this cool underneath effect going as it slides down. And then for the bar that slides out like that, that is done with the scale. And the way that I was able to do that was because I unlinked my proportion on my scale. So if you click, so when you open it up, you'll see that you have this little link here. You unlink it, and then you can change the width of your scale. And I did that for these two ones on the side as well. I just had to shift the anchor point over here. And you can do that by clicking A and then moving your anchor point. So next step here is to figure out how to get that nice glow effect and all that stuff. Get some grit and grime in there. One thing that I do want to do is I do want to actually create a solid black layer to put on the background. The reason that I added that black layer is because when I color grade this, I need to make that black not true black, and if this was just transparent, if there was no layer behind it, I wouldn't be able to manipulate the black behind all the text. You can see here in the Stranger Things title sequence that that black right there isn't true black. Here's true black right here. So that black is faded, so I'm gonna have to do some curve adjustments later on. But for now, I gotta get this little glow effect thing going. did a couple things here. I just added some little glows throughout the title here and there. If you go into the Stranger Things sequence, you can see that there's this added glow throughout the title. What I did was I had to duplicate any letter that I wanted to do that. So for example, this T right here. I duplicated the T and then I added some curves. I really cranked those highlights added a glow, and then on the glow, I actually created an expression. To do that, I held down Option on my keyboard and then selected the keyframe, and that brings up your expressions. The expression I used was the wiggle expression. That's giving the glow a little bit of a flicker. And then I just masked out random areas so that it wasn't on the entire letter, like the Stranger Things title sequence. And then after that, I created an adjustment layer and I added some Gaussian blur to it and then changed the blending mode on that adjustment layer to screen. What that does is kind of give this kind of washed out, almost like a black pro mist filter. It just softens everything up, it gives this dreamy feel. And I have the blurriness set to 50 and then I actually animated it to be a little bit more intense at the end because that's what I noticed the Stranger Things title did as well. And then the last thing that I did was I just added some curve adjustments and then dust and scratches and some noise. And then from there I would just bring the composition into Premiere. All you gotta do is just import your project, your After Effects project, and then select the composition you want to bring in. But yeah, that's gonna be it for today's episode. If you wanna see more of these Stranger Things challenges, I think I have a few more up my sleeve, but if there's anything in particular you'd like to see, let me know in the comments below. Just please, no, no spoilers, all right? With that said, I'm gonna close this video out, so thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button, leave a comment down below, all that stuff. And as always, stay hungry. Peace.